Hi everyone, welcome to a new video showing my full process for making a paper cutting shadow box. This one is based on Attack on Titan by Isayama Hajime, and it is literally a panel from the manga that I traced and turned into a shadow box. So uh, layout wise, this was pretty simple. I did think about adding some stuff in the in the foreground, like extra characters on the rooftops maybe, or some of the other titan shifters looking at <laughs> this massive beast in the background, but then I figured the, the panel itself was really effective um, and adding anything would distract from the main attraction that is the founding titan in the background. Uh, by the way, I might end up um, saying some spoilers um, from Attack on Titan up to Anime Season Four Part Two. Uh, so here's your spoiler warning if you haven't, if you're not caught up to that point. I would made an Attack on Titan box uh, several years ago, <laughs> maybe more now. I don't know. Um, after I just watched uh, Season Two, and when we thought that the main threat in the story were the Colossal Titan and the Armored Titan. So my box was centered on those two. Well, three, because I added the female Titan as well. Um, and then I watched more of the anime and I thought, oh, <laughs> this story went uh, different places than I expected. And I figured I'd make a new box when the series was completed. And then like, a a after I have all the factors um, to take into account. But then I saw the the reveal of the founding titan and my first thought was I want to make that into a shadow box that looks amazing and then I want to draw it and I want to cut it. So um, could not be patient enough to wait for the, the end of the series so hey I might make a third one. When, whenever we get whatever crazy reveal they've got for us in the in, in the end of the in this in the series finale um but yeah this is where when i traced that um panel i knew that i would have more layers than i usually do but i actually didn't really know how to organize them and i kind of um winged it as i drew and decided um on the fly which house and which titans to include where which, on, in hindsight, might not have been a great idea because there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of comparing with other panels. It worked out in the end, but it was a bit uh, messier than I like it to be. And when I drew, when I traced and then redrew the, the Founding Titan here, this was the first time that I had to fill in um, parts that would not be paper, parts that I would need to cut out because there were so many bones and so many lines to keep track of that I knew that when I would get to the cutting stage, I'd get lost. I, I, I'd stop. I, I wouldn't be able to tell what's bone and what's empty space. So like the little coloring in that you're seeing here is me trying to make life easier for myself. Um, even though like the founding Titan was a, it was a massive undertaking and I knew that going in and I was looking forward to it. The floating characters here that you're seeing is, I, I made a mistake again of fully tracing them on the rooftop and then realizing, oh, actually I need to cut them separately to paste them over the rooftop. Um, or it's going to look weird with just like figures coming out of the roof. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted us to see their full bodies and not just their silhouettes. So, um had to trace them twice because I'm an idiot uh, and then pasted them on top of the rooftop which I think looks better in the end especially because there's a lot of light coming into those two so you could really see the details of them they weren't too um, too dark from all the other layers on top of them this box had much more layers that um, I'm used to making. I ended up with nine layers when I'm usually at, usually at from four to six is my average. Nine was a lot more and I was a little worried that it might 
um, because of the distance from the paper to the light that it, some bits might end up too dark or like bits might get lost because of um, yeah the differences in shadows but turns out because they're kind of going um, like there's nothing that's um, obstructing anything else because it's got this nice um, funnel type of arrangement um, so uh, lighting wise turned out to uh, work out quite well and every time you're seeing weird um, chunks underneath the uh, titans there like me making the base wider uh, that's because if you're making something that's too long standing up from the frame um, it might end up toppling over like because um, the paper will just bend at where it's attached to the frame and then it's gonna like fold over uh, so I made so I always made sure whenever I could whenever I knew the base would be hidden to make the base wider than the actual shape to make sure that um, the the shapes would stay upright especially for those final titans that are really um, they're essentially just long strips of paper and here we get to the monster of this piece and, like the real reason I wanted to make this whole thing was because I thought the founding titan looks really cool and all of those thin insane lines would look really cool as shadows uh, so I was really excited to get to that point even though it took an insane amount of time just cutting this not even including drawing time or tracing time it took about three hours and um, when you're cutting this many tiny little holes after a while you kind of just get into a zone where it's like you're not really thinking anymore you're just kind of following the lines like thank god i colored them in because yeah i had like after a while it was like just just follow the lines don't don't think about what you're doing and it's it's weirdly relaxing <laughs> you get kind of into a trance But yeah, it was also, like, I, my worry for this one specifically is that it doesn't touch the top layer. You can see, like, the, uh, what are we going to call them? It, it, it's fins at the top. It, it, it's ribs sticking out. Uh, don't touch the, the top uh, part of the layer. So the, it's only attached by the bottom. And my slight worry was that uh, as I mentioned before, it would just fold over because it is a long strip of paper in a way. But turned out it was fine because uh, the base was wide enough, even though it's uh, divided there. As long as everything's attached together, it had a wide enough base that it managed to stay upright. And even if it bent a little bit, um, there were like a, there was a cloud layer behind it, so I wasn't too worried because like the cloud layer was high up enough and close enough that it would catch it, so it wouldn't like bend completely. Uh, but turns out I was worrying for nothing because, like I said, the base was really wide. Um, f t when you get towards the back of the body, that like I like to make gaps between lines usually just thicker than just cutting it once just running your blade once through the paper so that you can see the the divide between the lines more clearly but as you get towards the back i stopped doing that as you can see i'm just like cutting it once per line because um it, it gives you a better impression of depth like the the lines closer to you, the the ribs or whatever they are closer to you are more spaced out, and then the ones at the back are just like lines blending into each other. So just cutting them once gives you the idea that they are separate, but uh, making the cuts thinner than what I usually do gives you that nice uh, impression of depth. It gives you the idea that the the ribs are kind of uh, fading into each other towards the background. Because this thing is massive. <laughs> so, 
So yeah, it, 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 that's an amazing design there. Um, props to the to, to the creators for this one. I I really enjoyed that reveal. Uh, cannot wait to see what happens next. I don't read the manga. Please don't spoil me. Uh, really excited for uh, the the new season to see what kind of crazy shit that 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 rumbling titan founding titan gets up to. And this is the foam dividers between each layer. And at that point, I started getting worried because um, adding the foam strips to uh, my layers made me realize just how thick nine layers ended up being. And I got genuinely worried that they would not fit in my frame, that that they would stick out in that, uh, like, at worst, I wouldn't be able to add lights behind it. So... A slight concern there, but turns out they are they were just the right size to add my LED strips at the back. So note to self, never make more than <laughs> nine strips or it will not fit. Uh, but there you go, there's the final product. A little close-up there for you to see all the details because like I'm really proud of this one. I think it turned out really well. And I, I'm happy about how the the details of the town and the the Titans don't distract from the main attraction that is the founding Titan. Um, I'm happy with how the lighting turned out as well, of how the Titans uh, get brighter as they get towards the back, and how the founding Titan really, really stands out against the background and against those clouds. So. I'm very happy. I'm very proud of this design. Um, so I, I'm not going to put it up on sale yet as I'm going to um, a, a con later in the year where I'm hoping to sell it there. If I don't, I'll add um, a link to my Etsy shop so you can buy this box. But you can follow links, the links to my Instagram, links to my Etsy shop in general. Um, so you can see the photo gallery for this one, and uh, I've got more videos coming, so stay tuned for those. Bye!